Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. A new report by civil organization Budget has uncovered corruption in Nigeria's 2021 budget. The report shows recurrent expenditure items disguised within the capital budget. And Budget says this is widespread. An example is a 40 million naira allocation for the Ministry of Information meetings, which is included as capital spending. In all, 2.87 billion naira was allocated to 112 items for meetings and wrongly labeled as capital expenditures, just as 2.5 billion naira was budgeted for advocacy, awareness and sensitization and put under capital expenditure. Budget founder Shion Onigminde is here with us. Good morning, Mr. Onigminde. I can hear you, yes. Right, good morning. It's a well, pleasure being here this morning. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. We also have um, an economist, uh, Mr. Ken Ife, uh, joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Thanks for joining us. Oh, hi. Good morning. Thanks for inviting me. All okay. right. So, Mr. Onigbide, um, you're the founder of Budget. And um, beginning with this whole analysis, what, may I ask what the processes were, you know, the processes that were involved in the audits of this budget? Um, so we have a team of uh, data analysts and experts whose work is to comb the budget from the first line item to the line, to last one. There are over 19,000 uh, line items in the budget, so we pay attention to everything. We also have a software that guides us in doing this. And one of the things we first look at is to check the classification of items, which is what you've said, because um, you would hear that uh, the capital expenditure is possibly 30% of the budget. But you also want to integrate that clearly to be sure that items that are placed as capital items are actually capital items. Um, so one of the things we do is to look into the budget from the beginning to the end and review and analyze them. And we're certain that we are doing the, they, they are doing the right thing. And um, I, when we looked into that budget is when we found many things. When we have found capital budget pardon where people just take provide items and label them as capital projects, and which has a direct impact on the people or has a long lasting effect on the people. Um, the second thing you see again is a mismatch between institutional mandate and capital projects. So you have like a Ministry of Forestry um, that is trying to deliver solar lighting projects. Um, or also a, a, a institution in, around forestry delivering solar lighting projects. Or somebody that is also on human rights um, um, doing, doing different work on sensitizing, doing sensitization or delivering uh, also solar lights. I mean, so many things just a mismatch between what exactly ministry should do and that. Then you see duplication of project. A single project with the same um, budget code and be repeated over and over and over. And uh, we believe that the budgeting process should have been better improved beyond this. Um, we should not be at this level um, at this time. Um, there should be a better way to come in the budget and ensure that uh, uh, we have chat, we, we are doing the right things. You know, Nigeria has a revenue problem. Uh, but what this uh, analysis has shown is that Nigeria also has an effic expenditure efficiency problem, which is we also spend in the little we have, um, which is underpinned by significant debt on frivolous items, which should not be at the end of the day. All right. Um, Ken, if I, um, I'm going to bring you in now. You're an economist. Um, for a long time, we've talked about budget padding. Uh, the uh, former National Assembly headed by Bukula Sarki was, was the last time that we had a big conversation on it. Um, um, so seeing all of this now, uh, t t what does this you know, all you know, mean for you? And then second, how dangerous is this that we keep having these repeated figures here and there and um, you know, complete lack of uh, blockage of uh, leakages in Nigeria's uh, budget? Well, I think um, let me begin by congratulating uh, Budget because they are doing an excellent uh, job. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that the capacity that they represent to find a way of transmitting across the whole budgetary process and monitoring process. Um, I know that the crux of the matter would be the level of the political will to deliver. And, and they actually try to do it timely to inform the, the budgeting process as they are actually coming to appropriation. So, so sometimes I can't understand why if they raise all this alarm, uh, not much gets done. In other words, I do find in the report, the excellent report, where they have actually identified some of these items, 
um, incorrectly placed in those, uh, and they get removed, and then they find their way back again into the budget. So it shows that there may well be a higher, a higher level of complicity that we are, we are aware of. But I think it's very unfortunate, to be honest, that we are, we are, we are on this level of uh, scrutiny. One is that when you say capital budget is 30%, it raises a bit of hope because we now see that we always know that capital expenditure is the way in into creating jobs and, and ensuring that we keep the infrastructure spent on, on, uh, in, in, uh, at the right pace with, with the level of economic growth. But when you find the current items finding their way into the capital budget, it does reduce the, the claim uh, uh, and then it does show, you know, it doesn't show prudence, it doesn't show transparency, it doesn't show accountability, it doesn't show anything except just uh, a distraction from, from, from what we, we should be doing. Now, I also take exception to the fact that um, you have this ongoing padding, padding exercise going on, despite all the cries and news over the last six, seven years, it's still going on. The one thing that I wasn't very clear about is that when I looked into the report and found the, the irregularities and the consistency of these irregularities across a wide range of MDAs, I, I started wondering, does this have anything to do with the so-called constituency budgets? Mm. Uh, I'm not sure. But, but when I look at, because when I look at the level of uh, uh, complicity, the level of uh, duplicity, they are so accurate. It's the same number, the same description. It's all repeating themselves. And I begin to wonder whether an investigation has been done to see whether this actually matches with the, the whole story of the um, constituency board. Uh, and, and I think um, my colleague may have to help me here. Okay. So, Cheryl, I'm bringing you back in here. Um, budgets or audits of the 2021 budget showed that there are 316 duplicated capital projects worth about 39.5 you know, billion naira. And the slides I've been showing on our screens says that the Ministry of Health you know, is one of the agencies that has the highest number of duplicated projects, totaling 115. Where could the challenge lie? Would you say this is because of lack of interagency collaboration, corruption? Where is the challenge here? Yeah, I mean, I think one we all first have to look at the budget office. There seems to be no um, coordinated review of the budget that is sent from the ministries, from the line ministries to the budget office. Maybe in the midst of us to meet that December deadline, uh, we they have not expanded capacity to be able to really check into the budget and say this is things missing. Uh, and this starts from the budget officers that are in resident in ministries. Um, a whole lot of times, they might lack capacity to be able to properly put documents together or even be able to even write budget items in the structured way it should be. But it's someone's responsibility, which collates all the numbers, to be sure that all the items, uh, including the Prime Secretary of the Ministry, including its Director of Budget, and including the, the DG of the Budget, and all the people working. It's our responsibility to check everything and be sure that Online items are proper, but when you say single item to be reported, be, be repeated, you begin to wonder where exactly is the motive? Is this corruption? <laughs> I'm not even certain because would you, uh, would you, as accountant general, would I pay a single, uh, same amount on, on one, one and 15 times or one or, or 10, 20 times and say this is the item for the budget? But I feel like as we go along, we will budget we, our next step beyond this uh, media. Uh, and also engage with budget officers of live ministries if they are open to it. Um, and we are doing this early because this is May and we know that another process for the 2022 budget has started um, so that we are able to uh, salvage the budgeting process. This has been six years that this administration has been in office and things should have rapidly improved in the way our budgeting documents have been processed. But we. We don't see significant improvement. This 2021 budget was really, really a big let down. Yeah. The, there is, um, and Sheo Nigminde, you mentioned Nigeria, you know, does have a finance problem. Uh, we're struggling with generating enough money. Uh, we continue to see budget deficits uh, that have to be backed up by loans. 
Um, it would make a lot of sense mm. if we had an auditor general or an accountant general who is able to spot these things, block these leakages, um, ensure that there is no repetitions of these figures here and there, to ensure that money that is meant for healthcare, for infrastructure, for security, um, is um, enough and, of course, goes in, in those places. So, um, Mr. Kennefe, I want you to speak on the Accountant General, the Auditor General, and the National Assembly that, of course, went through all these processes and approved this budget and, and, and give a go-ahead for it. Well, one, what I would say, without um, being too particular on each of these offices, is that the work that the budget does is so critical because it does show how pervasive the use of technology can take us to the next level. It uh, uncovers the corruption, it uncovers irregularities, and then what we are now saying is what is the level of political engagement and political expression of political will and the building of or extending of capacity for the appropriate authorities who are either appropriating this budget or verifying this budget or um, uploading the budget to to the uh, to the frame, uh, or even monitoring and evaluating. To what extent can we rise to their level to ensure that the benefits of technology, uh, the use of technology for this um, scrutiny, is upheld? And this is very critical. And let tell you, I give you an example. For years, we have, bat we have battled with access to finance to the base of our economic pyramid, including, of course, the farmers. But see what technology has done. We have bank, ver uh, bank verification number, BVN, and then we also have satellite. I mean, imagine, satellite coordinates, GPS satellite coordinates has been recommended to be attached to this project so that anybody can pick up go into the internet and go and see, oh, you said they're going to do this uh, uh, power station, so not power, uh, this um, uh, two-kilometer stretch of uh, solar power. Where is it? You can now zoom down to where that location is and see whether it has actually happened because they have claimed the money. So, but if they are totally rejecting the inclusion of this, then it raises a big alarm. And I have to say to body, continue the fight. Just look at advocacy. You need advocacy. You are just one in one. Um, all right, uh, we're still having a conversation. We must have lost our guest uh, with uh, Shewon Nigbinde, the uh, founder. Dealing of, with, uh, you need advocacy, a wider level of okay. Because I'm giving you an example of what is happening with Central Bank. The Central Bank has decided that since we have BVN technology and then we have satellite coordinates of the one hectares per farmer, right, farmers can now have their money without having to provide collateral. So you can now see over 4 million farmers migrate from subsistence farming into commercial farming in a robust arrangement in which they are integrated into the national and international supply chain. And then you have all kinds of anchors in between. I mean, it's unbelievable. Now we can deal with a diversification agenda in the sense of backward integration. We now do, So many things are being addressed just because we have allowed technology to sit. So we have to continue. Because how can you have Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2007 that prescribes what has to happen at the level of the federal government, state government, and local government, and we have various provisions of this that are being violated, and then you have technology backbone that is unearthing this, and then it is going on notice. So I say, do the advocacy platform so that we can all take it on from all angles, and then bring it more to the level of scrutiny, like the television debates that we are having. I okay. think it is the way to go. All right, Mr. And, uh, and I just have to urge you to do more in this direction. All right, um, Shewon Nigmide, uh, some people would argue that Nigeria's budget never really is set up to work for Nigerians. It is simply an annual event that needs to be, you know, uh, needs to take place, you know, because that's part of what our constitution says. Um, are these simply, you know, uh, uh, things like this today, you know, maybe also give uh, credibility to that statement? Yeah, I mean, um, it, it might be true uh, because when you look at the line items in the budget, um, it looks like the Nigerian budget is just an extension of personal interest. Um, several line items you see that you, especially those classified as capital expenditure, in these austere times, you see that they have no direct effect on the people. I mean, there is no clear evidence that this is going to transform the life of the people in a significant way. 
Uh, and that's always going to be a problem about why we will not get the right optimization of resources in Nigeria. Um, what we need at this point is resource optimization. Uh, what we don't need time for but over, over valued items. We don't need, um, we have, we, there is no time for us to put, to stuff the budget with, in, with projects that don't transform the life of Nigerians. Um, and that's why when you look at the budget, you find over 19,000 capital projects. You went to ask yourself, to what purpose? I mean, would we execute 19,000 things in a whole year? Does our procurement system even optimize in a way to deliver this? And another thing we are seeing is that most of these project items are also fragmented. So you have several items, almost 14,000 items are less than 500 million. So, and you always do this just because you're trying to build, um, beat the procurement system so that you do it much more internally. And you don't maybe go to the Federal Executive Council and, and, and where that's much more bigger oversight. Well, for me, I think the federal government should be the federal government, focus on the big pipe projects that transformed the lives of people on the whole scale. Projects that state government, local government can plug into. Now you burden yourself with a 10 million solar power system or a 5 million street lighting system. All those things are unnecessary. Let us know that the federal government should focus on the big pipe projects that transform the citizens. And, and that's exactly what the function is supposed to be. But when we say we, well, after we've had 100 billion a constituency project that we say it's our own way of getting the senators or the House of Rep members to intimate with their citizens. Why are we still focused on this um, small uh, micro-sized project again? Um, there's no discipline. That's what I'm saying. The, the, there's no discipline in the budgeting system. And it looks like everybody just puts whatever they like in the budget and just take it through the whole process and maybe rub bands with the senators and rub bands with the budget office and everything just gets passed. Okay. We cannot get in Nigeria that we want that way. All right. Um, we, of course, uh, there's also parts of this conversation that have to do with uh, security. Uh, there's about 10 trillion Naira mm -hmm. that has uh, been budgeted for security in the la since 2015. You know, that is part of this conversation. Um, and of course, um, agencies that have continued to collect security budgets um, and add security budgets uh, to, you know, their, um, um, their figures every year. So we'll, we'll talk about that after this uh, short break. We have a security expert joining us. Uh, here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.